Hey there, boils and ghouls. It's your friend Taryn Taz. I'm back with a new video. And uh, just really quick, um, before I start this video, I know people have already, you know, talked about this subject and, you know, people have already, you know, reviewed this. So if you're watching this video, I just want to take a minute to say thank you sincerely for watching. I know other people have already done this. I'm, you know, I'm not the first. I'm, you know, kind of late to the party on this one. But, uh, you know, you took the time out of your day to watch this and to, you know, support me by watching it. So I, I just absolutely thank you so much and uh, also too I just reached 300 subscribers which that to me is huge and uh, you know I can't tell you all how much I appreciate every single one of you I've said it before but that's the only bad part though is just you know words really don't express how how much I really appreciate all of you you know from the very first one to subscribe to my channel to the most recent one it's like and everybody in between it's just you know, just, I'm so humbled that, you know, anybody is interested to take the time to hear anything I want to say or, you know, to watch anything that I put out. And, uh, I really do hope that, you know, like my videos make it worth your while and that, you know, uh, that I'm not wasting your time and that, you know, um, I hope to keep making good videos and, you know, hopefully as time goes on, you know, find out ways to try to make them better. So, but anyway, so, uh, let's get into this. Yeah. Real quick, uh, before um, you know how I usually do these videos, if you don't mind, just a, a couple of minutes to indulge me. So, yeah, before we get started, just, you know, a couple of pickups that I got and, uh, well, a handful of pickups. But, uh, yeah, I just want to show them to you real quick. Uh, just picked this up, as a matter of fact, like an hour ago, and I got it for a really good markdown price. I can't wait to check this out. This looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, but we have Violent Night on Blu-ray, DVD combo. Um... Yeah, it's like, I remember uh, Mid-Level Media doing his video where he was talking about, like, why, you know, these Universal tiles like this and Megan and I forget what the other one, oh, Cocaine Bear, you know, talking about, like, how come these movies are not getting 4K releases and stuff? But, um, you know, I have a couple of theories on that, but that's a video for another day. But for right now, you know, got this for a really good markdown price and, you know, can't wait to check it out. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I like David Harbour. I'm not the biggest uh, Stranger Things fan in the world, but I do like him. You know, I like his gruff kind of sense of humor and stuff like this. So, so I'm looking forward to checking this out. This is going to be a lot of fun. So, so yeah. So, Violent Night, cool. Glad to have that one. This one here, I've been. I, this has been sitting on my Amazon wish list forever, and uh, yeah, it was just a couple of days ago. You know, it dropped down in price, and I could get it delivered the very next day, which was today. I just got this a couple of hours ago. But finally getting this off my wish list and adding it to my collection is Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. I've already seen this movie before. It's a really, really good film. Great amicus anthology film. Really good cast. You got Peter Cushing as Dr. Terror. And you can see you got, you know, you got uh, Christopher Lee there. Uh, you got young Donald Sutherland. You know, so yeah, this is a really good film. And, you know, it's like, man, this has just been sitting on my wish list forever. I, can't believe I'm actually finally holding it. And I've watched the movie several times. It is a good film, so I'm glad to finally, finally own it. So yeah, happy to get that. This one here I'm really, really happy to get because now I have the entire uh, series on Blu-ray. We have the sixth and final season of Lucifer. I really enjoy this show. This show has always been a lot of fun. Um, just great black comedy. Uh, Tom Ellis as Lucifer, you know, he was awesome. I know... You know, I, I used to be friends with uh, people on Facebook and stuff that, you know, they they were not fans of this show. And I just kind of thought it was intriguing the way it kind of twisted things twisted things around, you know, like twisted around, you know, like stories of the Bible and everything else. And just kind of, you know, really did an interesting take on it. But, but oh, yeah, all the characters on here are amazing. Lucifer, he's awesome. Lauren German, oh, God. Lauren German, she is a goddess. But as, you know, Chloe Decker and, you know, just all the characters on here, Amenadiel, everybody on this show is awesome. And, you know, it's like, sad that the show is over, but you know what? The way they ended it, you know, it's like, they did a great job and, you know, and it's really nice to actually now have the entire series on there. I just wish Vertigo, uh, you know, Vertigo, any chance you could maybe put out season four and five of um, iZombie on Blu-ray? Because, you know, I only got one, two, and three, and... It would be nice to be able to complete that collection, you know, and have the entire 
series of I Zombie on Blu-ray, but it is what it is, as they always say. So, but anyway, yeah, glad to finally now have the entire series of Lucifer on Blu-ray. Happy about that. Picked up a couple of steel books. You guys have remember, you know, you watched my last couple of videos. I talked about uh, steel books that I had to get rid of because. Not that I had to get rid of them, but I had to sell them because I needed the money to pay rent when I first moved here. And uh, Getting some of them back slowly but surely. This one here, I kind of jumped on this one. I thought it was um, I thought it was the one that I had, but it turns out, no, this one's a bit different. But anyway, oh well. I'll still keep it anyway because it's a cool steel book. We have Saving Private Ryan. Look at that. Look at how boss that is. You, know? you see how it sticks out there? But, yeah. Um, this is pretty much just going to be, there's the inside there. Hold on. This is pretty much just going to be a collectible. I'm not re going to really be watching this Blu-ray because I have, there we go. Yeah, you can see where it's like indented there. But anyway, yeah, I'm not going to really be watching this Blu-ray because, you know, um, I have it on 4K. So, so really, yeah, this is just more of a collectible. So, but anyway, glad to finally have back a, you know, a nice, uh, steel book of Saving Private Ryan. That's cool. And this one here, I never had this one before, but it was for a really, really dirt cheap price. And just because I love the movie so much, I figure I'll go ahead and jump on this. This is another one. I'll probably never watch this disc because, again, I have it on 4K. But anyway, it is The Evil Dead. <coughs> Excuse me. Kind of surprised how cheap this steelbook goes for nowadays, you know. It's like usually it's 10 bucks or under. So, but anyway, yeah, glad to finally have... Evil Dead Steelbook. I've been eyeing it for a long time, wanting to get it, and finally the yeah, that booklet. I don't know who had this before, but man, that booklet's definitely been through some through some wars there, you know. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, no inside artwork. But anyway, just yeah, I've been eyeing this for a long time, and Evil Dead is one of my favorite movies ever, and so yeah, just glad to finally have a Steelbook of this. But like I said, this is probably just going to be more of a collectible because I have it on 4K. And the last thing I picked up is uh, from uh, Shutter Original. You got to, I mean, just the premise alone, come on. It slacks. I'm sure you've heard of this movie. I mean, come on. A movie about killer blue jeans? Come on. It just it just sounds too good. I, I got to check this out. So hopefully I'll watch this here after a while. But uh, yeah. See, I mean, look at right there. You know, blue jeans that kill people. And, and, uh, you know, it's a Shutter, it's a Shutter exclusive. And, you know, I try to pick up as many of these as I can because, you know, they just always do a great job. And um, it's very, very seldom. I'm ever, you know, I'm ever uh, disappointed in a Shutter original. I've, I've seen a couple that are kind of like, no, nah, that could have been better. But, you know, for the most part, usually like, yeah, the Shutter movies, I'm always happy to get them. So, all right. So that's the, uh, that's it for the pickups. All right. Now let's get to the real reason why you're here. Today, I got in the 4K Blu-ray steelbook of The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Who will survive and what will be left of them? Um, I'm not going to go into too many details here about the, you know, the outside. I mean, yeah, that's gorgeous. I love the way that... I like the way it kind of almost... It's almost like 3D in the way it... I don't think the camera could pick that up, but... but anyway, so... Yeah, it does look gorgeous. I know you. I know other people have shown theirs off, but I want to do it too. Anyway, there's a back. That's the one thing I will say is definitely a disappointment. Is nothing on the back. Just wow. Okay, couldn't do anything with that. Come on. So then we got the inside there. There comes a poster with this. I'll probably just keep that in there because I've already got a poster for this. Okay, we got the. Uh, we got the. First disc, which is the 4K. You got the second disc, which is the bonus features Blu-ray. And, uh, well, let me see. Man, like I said, I'm going to try not to waste too much of your time with this because I'm sure you've already seen it. It's the infamous dinner scene. But, um, yeah. So, glad to finally have a copy of this on 4K. Kind of like, this is one of the part of my holy trinity of, um, horror movies. I mean, I love many, many, many horror movies, but, you know, if they were, like, my top three, I would definitely have to say this is definitely one of them. Then, uh, believe it or not, this is another one of them. I know some people will probably be like, dude, you know, you should really go with Evil Dead 2. Don't get me wrong, I love Evil Dead 2, but this is a movie, anytime it's on, I can sit there and watch it. 
And uh, the other one is the original Halloween. So kind of like, to me, my holy trinity of horror films is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original Halloween, and Evil Dead. And uh, yeah, so we got this in today. And how does it look? Um, it's not bad. You know, I will say that. It has a decent picture on it. The transfer is okay. Um, the only thing is, though, we're talking about an old movie shot on 60 millimeter, and there still is a pretty high grain content in here, <clears throat> which I don't think that's going to really upset too many fans of the movie because um, I remember years back when the very first Blu-ray of Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out from Dark Sky, and a lot of people were really upset because what they ended up doing is they really like tried to clean the picture up and really try to take out a lot of the grain and really try to polish up the picture. And a lot of people hated that. They did not like that. And, uh, you know, and then when they did the 40th anniversary, that's when they did the 4K remaster on it. A lot of people were saying, okay, this looks better because it has that grain. It has that, it, it, it maintains that kind of documentary style feel, um, kind of has that kind of like, uh, kind of grunge band feel to it and everything and gives it that more kind of realistic quality that people really associate with this movie and really like about it. And this here, um, you still get the, you know, you still get the uh, film grain, but you could tell it is a little bit more cleaned up than the 40th anniversary Blu-ray. Um, I noticed that, especially like, you know, scenes inside the Leatherface house and then around the dinner scene and stuff like that. Um, I can remember watching the Blu-ray and that's like, there are some parts you could still see like, you know, like some film splotches and stuff like that pop up on screen and everything. And, and this here, it's, it's, uh, they kind of get rid of a lot of that. You could tell they did some cleanup work on this here, but, um, it's still, um, it still has that film grain. And, you know, honestly, this is probably is the best this movie's ever looked because it, it really has hit a balance. It's not too cleaned up looking, but it's not too, um, it's not too worn down looking anyway. I know I've had a couple of people tell me that the best way to watch, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is to watch on VHS. And I'm going to, I know what I'm going to say is blasphemy, but honestly, I hated watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre on VHS because it wasn't until DVD and then on when they started like really cleaning up the picture and stuff that I realized so much of the things that I was missing. Like, okay, the best example is like this scene here. When Leatherface takes Pam and he puts her on the me hook. And I remember the v the media VHS, the picture quality was so damn dark. And, and just like, you know, the, the shot where it's supposed to be showing the bucket underneath her feet to catch the blood. I didn't even know there was a bucket there. It just, it was pitch black pretty much. And it just panned up to her and, and I was just like, what was, I remember watching that and being like, well, what was the point of that? You know, I thought, I just thought they were just trying to go for a cool shot or something like that. It wasn't until I started watching on DVD and stuff, you know, where, um, yeah, like this DVD here, you know, it wasn't until I started watching that where I was kind of like, oh, okay, so there was, that's why, you know, there was something there. And then, you know, being able to start picking up more and more of the detail of, um, you know, inside the farmhouse. So, you know, and then, uh, as that's the thing, I know, I know there are people out there who'd be like, blasphemy, you should love this on VHS. It's like, truth be told, no, I don't. Okay, because, you know, it's like um, watching the later, you know, versions of this being put out and now today with the 4K version, it's nice to really appreciate all the work and effort that the people who made the film put into it. Like Robert Burns, you know, with his set decoration and stuff like that. It's really nice to appreciate the grisly artwork and everything that he put into it, you know, and may he rest in peace. And, um, you know, the hard work that Toby Hooper, may he rest in peace and everybody put into this film. And, uh, you know... And that was the thing, just I always remember, like, once I started seeing a lot of the detail and stuff coming out on this film, I just remember, hey, as like, man, I hated the VHS, you know, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, VHS enthusiasts, I'm not trying to rain on your parade or anything like that, but just, to me, it's just, I never liked watching this movie on VHS. So, but, um, I will say that, you know, yeah, the uh, picture quality on here, it's probably the best this movie's ever gonna look. Like I said, it's not... <clears throat> it's not, you know, too polished, but it's not too, uh, it's not too like grainy or run down looking or anything. I think they found a perfect balance with this. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, I know there are probably going to be some people who would be like, oh, screw that. Wait for the second site 4k coming. And it's like, I don't know if they're going to use the same transfer. They've got a better one, but 
for right now, it's like, you know, if somebody told me, like, this is what you're stuck with, I can live with it. So, and the picture quality, you do get HDR on it. And uh, the HDR definitely is a nice addition. Um, doesn't really work too much, so much in the daytime scenes, but, yes, yeah, when you start getting into the nighttime scenes, especially, like, around the, you know, the third act when they're having dinner in the house and stuff, that's where you really get to see a payoff. Excuse me, at least in my opinion. The uh, sound on the sound on here is fantastic. You got what was it? The, you got Adobe Atmos, and then you got Adobe Master uh, HD Audio. Or what's it? I'm sorry, I got the J card here. A DTS uh, Master Audio, AT Master Audio. And so, uh, but anyway, yeah, it sounds great. It looks really good. Um, like I said, you know, it's like I don't know. Maybe the Second Sight 4K will be better, but you know, honestly, like. Still, if somebody told me this is what you're stuck with, I can live with it. So, and then uh, let's go ahead. We got the J card here. And uh, just real quick, um, you know, you do have Dolby Vision. Uh, let's see. Disc one, you have the four commentaries, you know, brought over from the, you know, brought over from the, uh, the previous, the 40th anniversary edition. You have, you know, the commentary with Toby Hooper, Gunnar Hansu, who played Leatherface, and the DP, Daniel Pearl. You got the uh, one with uh, Marilyn Burns, the stars, Marilyn Burns, Alan Danziger, Paul Partain, and production designer Robert Burns. You have the uh, solo commentary with uh, uh, Toby Hooper, which I believe there's a moderator on there. Then you have another one with uh, uh, DP Daniel Pearl, editor J. Larry Carroll, and sound recorders Ted Niccolo, who gone on to become a writer-director in his own right. Uh, disc 2, you have the new feature-length documentary, The Legacy of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, it's okay. Um, it's, it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be, but it is a nice little documentary. There are a lot of interviews, mostly with, uh, the makers of the recent Chainsaw Massacre films going back to the 2003 remake. Not so much on Chainsaw the Beginning, but, you know, they do talk to, uh, Marcus Nispel, who directed the 2003 remake, which that's kind of bugging me. I mean, I know we're early into the year, anything can happen, but, you know, you think about it. 2003, now it's 2023, you know, would be a nice idea if, you know, this year we could maybe get, you know, the uh, 4K release of the remake. We got the original, like, would be nice if we could get the 2003 remake on 4K this year. Just my opinion, but but uh, they talked to him, they talked to uh, Adam Marcus and Deborah Sullivan, who, who worked on uh, Chainsaw 3D, uh, the directors of uh, Leatherface, uh, in my opinion, probably the worst Chainsaw Massacre movie. They talked to Fede Alvarez, who, you know, co-wrote and produced the uh, 2022, you know, reboot of Chainsaw. So, you know, it's a nice documentary. Um, you know, it wasn't exactly what I expected, but it's okay. You know, it is nice to have a new bonus feature. I guess, though, talking to a lot of the, the cast and crew, whatever's left, and then talking to, you know, people who worked on the subsequent films, and everything, I guess maybe they probably feel like, you know, with the documentaries and everything, they kind of exhausted everything that they need to say. So it's just kind of like, you know. Anyway, still, a nice a nice addition. You have the uh, Cinema fa the cinema Family uh, presents uh, Freakin' and Hooper, a conversation about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre between William Freakin' and Toby Hooper. This was on the, uh, this is still on the uh, Black Maria box set you can get. I never got that one. I got the... Uh, four disc uh, 40th anniversary I just gave that to my brother kind of an early birthday present for him trust me I'm not that much of a cheapskate I did buy him some other good things I promise but uh, yeah so we got that uh, let's see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre the Shocking Truth documentary Flesh Wounds Seven Stories of the Saw pretty much just everything imported over from past editions a tour of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house with Gunnar Hansen off the Hook with Terry McMinn. Love you, Terry McMinn, if you ever watch this. you know, Thank you for being a Facebook friend for so many years. Um, the Business of Chainsaw, an interview with production manager Ron Bozeman. Deleted Scenes and Outtakes, Grandpa's Tales, an interview with actor John Dugan. Another one, thank you, John, for being my Facebook friend for all these years. Uh, Cutting Chainsaw, an interview with editor J. Larry Carroll. Uh, Deleted Scenes and Outtakes, Blooper Reel, Outtakes from The Shocking Truth. Horrors Hollow Grounds, Chainsaw Massacre, love Horrors Hollow Grounds. Uh, Dr. W.E. Barnes presents Making Grandpa, and Still Gallery trailers, TV spots, and radio spots. But, yeah. 
So they're like, you know, honestly, if somebody's like, well, are you going to pick up the second site? I don't know. I'm contemplating it. I mean, I got a few, you know, as you can see, I got a few versions of this movie already. I even got this old bad boy here, the Me Pack. But, uh, yeah, so I might. But anyway, I would say, yeah, while you're waiting for the second sight, Blue 4K, go ahead and pick this up. And uh, I'm happy I got it. I don't regret paying for it. And uh, I would say, go ahead and check it out. So, so that's it. So if uh, anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I also hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, would you please leave a like? And if you haven't already, go and subscribe to my channel. And once again, thank you to the 300 wonderful human beings who have subscribed. I can't tell you how much I treasure you all enough. And uh, that's it. So uh, take care, everybody. Have a good night, and I'll see you later.